2017, the little town where I was born and raised, Lynch, Kentucky, we celebrated our 100th year anniversary. They have been coal mined, deep mined in this area for 100 plus years. And so with all that deep mining, they have gotten all the cream of the crop, you know, the best coal they have gotten it. Coal is a finite resource. It's gone. Coal is gone. They've got all the coal. It's gone. There's going to be a little bit of mining here and there and all that, but it's gone for all practical purposes. That's where we've been fighting, you know, to try to tell people that, man, this is the 21st century, you know, and, and, you know, we're burning our planet up, man. I don't want to get all into that scientific stuff and all that, you know, but, hey, man, it don't take a brain surgeon to figure out, man, what's happening, man. You know, all the weather's patterns are changing and all this stuff. And, and you go over to India and places like that and you got little islands that are literally going underwater and everything. I mean, it's crazy. And something's going on with all this uh, CO2 stuff and everything, you know? I feel like a lot of people just forget how important it is to take care of your community, your environment. That's the environment that your kids are gonna grow up in, your grandkids are gonna grow up in, you know, your family, friends. So why not try to take care of it and, you know, preserve it for us younger people. Talking to people about strip mining and mountaintop removal and jobs and stuff, and they would say, well, if we didn't have coal, what, what would we have? And, and my response was always, well, if we didn't have coal, what could we have? We're trying to change people's thoughts about like wind energy, uh, micro hydro. Uh, there's different kinds of energies here that's becoming a lot cheaper. I know it's still a little expensive to do some of this solar stuff and all that, but every day we live, man, it's getting less expensive and it's so much more conducive to the environment. I'm looking for the stone that was hewn out the mountain, Lord. I'm looking for the stone that came rolling down from Babylon. Father came uh, when he was 16 years old to uh, the United States from Berenay in Montenegro. In 1917, the United States Steel Corporation was opening a coal mine town in Lynch, Kentucky, and so he came over here and started working for the United States Steel Corporation and then died at an early age from... Uh, Black Lung. All the immigrants that lived on my street, and there were many, all of those guys passed away too from Black Lung. Here's a monument to 263 coal miners who lost their lives in all of the mines from 1918 to 1997. We never had a disaster such as a mine fire or an explosion in any of our mines. Most of these are fatalities of a single nature. That's a lot of names for no major fatalities. The conditions back then were not anything close to what underground conditions are today. Much more dusty, less oxygen, more hazardous as far as safety of the roof and ribs. If the breadwinner of the family died, was injured, disabled. Those families had to vacate their home unless there was another sibling that possibly could have been working for either International Harvester or U.S. Steel. That was the head superintendent's home up there in Big Shot Street. He's the head Big Shot. As a third generation coal miner, the union was given to us. It was really given to us on a silver platter, guys. All the wages, the benefits, the days off, the vacations, it was all given to me. My father and his father are the ones that really fought and died, literally died for this, for the, for the union. This is where the union movement was started, right here in Harlan County. You know, we've got the reputation of bloody Harlan. There is murders right here still that's not been solved. There was a UMWA organizer shot and killed right there in the road back in the 1930s. May 1969 is when I went in the mines. I didn't get to work too long in the mines before I got injured. I was hurt in a uh, roof fall accident and uh, got mashed up rather, rather badly. I stayed in the hospital for about a year. I was lucky enough to be hired by the union organizing department. My first work assignment was the Brookside Strike. <laughs>
strike ended with a union guy getting killed by a uh, company official. He got his brains blown out. That's basically what got the contract, you know. It got everybody to the bargaining table, I guess. But that was just some of the things that union people go through. Seventy-eight. that was the last time we had operating mines in Lynch. We'd already mined the coal on the bottom and the mid-coal, and we were mining what we call the Winifred Seam, which is 800 to 1,000 foot from the peaks of the mountains. And it was only 50 to 60 inches thick, so it didn't take a long time with the new machines to extract all of that coal very rapidly. Then we had to move to the lower end of Benham and into Cumberland, where the larger seam was, we opened it in 68. We lasted 38 years. Okay, so now the coal industry is gone. It's not coming back. These companies kicked us to the wolves, you know, they just left. It's been a strain financially on Lynch and Benham to maintain the infrastructure, the water lines and the sewer lines, the roads and alleys. Whereas before, when the companies were here, whatever needed to be fixed, they fixed. There's no more railroad tracks. They pulled all the rail tracks up and everything. But they have been millions and millions and millions of dollars gone out of these haulers. They put nothing back. They robbed the politicians too. You know, they spent all this money giving politicians to, to keep these other industries out and stuff of this area because they was afraid they'd lose the workforce. Lynch had a population of 10,000 people at one time. Now we have a population of 600. Benham had a population of maybe 3,000. They may have 700. When I was growing up, there were 12 high schools in Harlan County. Now there's just two. You grow up, get an education, and you move away from Kentucky. It's hard to find a job around here, especially at a young age. After I left the union, you know, I got to looking around, man, and that's, that's basically when all this strip mining and stuff really got started getting bad around here in, in Appalachia. They figured out this way, what we call outcropping of coal. They can take the top of the mountain off and go down to a little seam of coal. And they can just do that a lot easier. A truck full of dynamite and a bulldozer and a couple of trucks and an end loader. You know what I mean? What is that? Five or six guys as opposed to 30 or 40. There is not one, not one union miner in the state of Kentucky. Our union hall has been turned into a food bank. A lot of the workers wages have been cut, their hours have been extended, their benefits reduced. What happens is that all this rocks and garbage that they dig up and blow up, all this is pushed over the mountain and it blocks up the streams. They put all these chemicals into it and all that with all the chemicals that are in dynamite and then all the oil and the grease and everything. All this stuff goes into the watershed. The creek that I grew up on, it runs orange with acid mine drainage. Acid mine drainage comes down on the right side and toxic mine drainage comes down on the left. I think the one thing that made me the angriest was uh, having to deal with the dust every day, the coal dust, because there was coal trucks running up and down this little road. And one time I had called them because my kids would have to walk across the, this little dip in the road to get on the school bus. And I asked them, and called the road department and asked them if they'd clean it up. And instead of them cleaning it up, they just called the mining company and said that I complained about it. So they sent a truck up to encircle my house, you know, just to intimidate me. So far, from Cumberland to the top of Black Mountain, we have been successful in stopping any strip mining. What success we've had is by using the law to our advantage. Because there is laws that says a company cannot push the overburden over the mountain or fill up the collar. We have got what they call uh, lands unsuitable for mining and we filed that with the state of Kentucky. That is what's got this company held up from actually 
strip mining right now. In the early 90s, we had heard from Hazel King, the first person that ever filed um, a citizen's complaint under SMACRA, which is the Surface Mining Reclamation and Control Act. She had found out that they were going to do mountaintop removal on the highest point in the state. We gathered up people and had public hearings and, and school children, you know, had ch hands across the mountain. And, we, and then one of the politicians um, actually stepped in and we had a land unsuitable for mining petition, which is, we call it a lump. And it's very difficult to get a land unsuitable for mining petition. So anything above 3,000 feet, you cannot touch it, you can't mine it, you can't log it, you can't do anything. Unfortunately, there is another group of coal companies that are starting to want to rip the mountains down from Cumberland to Lynch. So that's going to be another battle. This land is all leased from coal companies to timber companies. You can see the scars, I call them scars, where they've logged the trees. These loggers, man, they go in these mountains and they clear cut. They don't plant any other trees. They don't do any kind of reclaiming. When you don't have the trees to hold back the rain and hold back the water, kaboom, you know, look, look at the, we live in these little, little hollers, you know, and stuff. And, and buddy, when the rain comes, it, it, it just keeps washing right on down. It feels like having a carpet being pulled out from under me watching the mountains be destroyed. They're just my home, you know, and I've always had these love for them. King Jesus is the stone that was hewn out the mountain, Lord, tearing down the kingdom of this world. Oh, yeah. Tearing down the kingdom of this world. on his stuff, you know, talking about, oh, I'm going to bring back coal mining, coal miners are going to work. The percentage that voted was way down. I mean, it's like maybe 20%, 18%, you know, it was, it was pitiful. What we're trying to do is get people out to vote, man, you know. A lot of times you find people that either are minorities or very young. Um, that have not registered to vote. Also, people who are in the lower socioeconomic um, tend to not be registered as much. So what we really want to do is just get out and regardless of party, we want people to register so that their voices can be heard. If you have a felony on your record, you are not eligible to vote ever. Um, and this, of course, definitely impacts uh, minorities and the poor. The system is kind of yeah. set up for certain people yeah. to not be able to vote as easily as other people. Um, and so I think the work that we do, especially going to people's homes and making sure <laughs> they understand when the voter registration deadlines are, where they would need to vote, um, and then I think come voting day we, we also do like driving people to the polls and things for people who don't have rides. Even if you do register to vote, maybe your yeah. poll isn't open while you're off of work or you have to drive. It's not as an in, in easy location for you to get to. And then we have something called gerrymandering in this country where maps have been drawn as far as what the precincts are. You can draw those maps in a way that you're going to get a certain party's votes are going to count a whole lot more than the other parties and people get left behind even if they do vote. In our last election when we voted for governor, we only had about 30% of eligible voters show up to vote. So. Yeah, we get people out to vote, it's going to make a difference. What we're trying to do is we call it a just transition. My grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they want to come back, they want to live here, they want to make a living here, you know. We always had co-severance taxes that came back to the counties that was supposed to diversify the counties so that we would have an, another another opportunity for economics and instead of being a mono economy and nothing was ever used to diversify the economy so now that the coal mines are gone the counties are just left without anything because mm -hmm. most of the monies that came back actually went to rectify the problems that, that the coal companies caused in the first place like if they destroyed someone's water then they would take the coal severance taxes and 
put water lines to people's houses. We've got this, what they call the Reclaim Act that, that we've tried to introduce in Congress. If they could enact that, they would send millions of, of that money back to the coal fields. Of course, reclaim a lot of this property and everything, but take this property once it's reclaimed and maybe build some uh, some solar factories or some wind turbine factories. Our politicians love to holler, energy independence, energy independence. You know, that's been their big role and that's why we should have coal and that's why we should have oil, oil uh, and gas. And it's like, no, true energy independence is to be a, people to be able to have solar panels or windmills on their own houses and they're creating their own energy or having small community energy suppliers. We could create tens of thousands of jobs just cleaning up the messes that's left behind. If we could get the billions of dollars that's sitting in Washington, D.C. right now back in our hands working to clean up the messes from the past, we'd be much better off. With the mine exhibit, the coal museum, the fact that we sit at the base of the highest mountain in the state of Kentucky, it draws tourists in here. We just wish it would draw more. But you can't let an area that you want to be a tourist community run down to where a tourist says, oh, I don't want to go there. There's a lot of empty buildings here. So, you know, if you could get those buildings back up and put in small businesses in there, this town could be, you know, booming again. Right in this area, right here in eastern Kentucky, man, our, our people have one wars you know they worked in these mines and they supplied coal for for world war one world war two all even even the vietnam war and everything you know we have we have saved this country as far as have, helping build the battleships and build the tanks and all this stuff and everything i mean you know and we our men have lost their lives and stuff in the mines and all that and here it is now the coal industry is going out and going down and stuff. I mean, you know, it looks to me like we, we deserve a little payback. You know what I mean? Why not give us a little break now that we give all of our stuff in the past? How about helping our young people to help make a new future and a new industry here in Appalachia?